Making fleece blankets is super easy. You've probably seen those tie ones that have like the fringe all around the edge. But what if you don't want to tie them off? What if you want it to look a little braided instead? In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make this fleece blanket with a braided edge. First, I'm gonna show you the sew version and then I'm gonna show you the no sew version. Hi, I'm Nikita and welcome to my channel where this is what I do. I drink and I sew things. Today I am drinking Cupcake Prosecco because we have this in our fridge. I'm the kind of person who doesn't really save champagne for special occasions. I just drink it because like, today's Tuesday, let's celebrate. This one's pretty good. It's not too dry. I like it. So pour yourself a glass of something and let's get started. So you can just buy these no sew fleece blanket kits. Both of these I got on clearance from Joann's. All you're gonna need is a couple of yards of fleece, some fabric scissors, and a couple of safety pins. And that's it. Now you're gonna need two pieces of fleece and they should be cut to the same size. So what I like to do for a lap blanket or a kid's blanket, just do about a yard, yard and a half of fleece. And then if you're making this like for an adult, do like two and a half yards. So you want two and a half yards of two different pieces because we're gonna have one for the front and one for the back. The first step that you need to do is to make sure that they're cut to the same size and that all of these selvage edges and the kind of gross looking edges are all trimmed off. I'm actually gonna use my rotary cutter instead of my fabric scissors to go ahead and trim this off. So I just got this new cutting mat. It's so nice, I love it. Apparently every time that I would cut things in my previous videos directly on my table, my mother-in-law was like, ah! so she bought this for me for Christmas. <laughs> Thank you again, Annette, I love it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this. I folded it in quarters. So I just go ahead and trim off the weird edge. Then I'm gonna fold the other side into corners, match up these edges, and then I'm gonna do the same thing. Now that I've done this to one piece, I'm gonna go ahead and do it to my other piece. Now that my pieces are all cut, it's time to start putting them together. Okay, start by taking one of your pieces and laying it wrong side up. So the pretty side should be on the bottom. You can see that on fleece, usually one side is a little more vibrant than the other. So the side that's not as vibrant is the one that's gonna go up. Then take your other piece and lay it wrong side down. So the wrong sides are touching and the right side is face up and then the right side is face down on this one. We're not gonna be doing any turning right side out, so we want the blanket to look like how we want it to look before we start cutting and tying and that kind of stuff. Now, my blanket is obviously a little bit large, so this is harder for me to do on a cutting table. Even with just one yard of fleece, it's hard for me to do on this cutting table. So what I like to do is match up the corner and this edge here on my table and then I'll match up this left edge here and then I take a couple of safety pins and I pin both layers together. They don't have to be super close or super regular. The reason I'm pinning them is that the two layers stay put and they don't move anywhere when I'm sewing it and when I'm moving it around on my cutting table. Make sure that your underneath layer doesn't have any wrinkles in it while you're doing this. If you have a space on your floor or like your bed or something that's large enough to spread out the whole thing, then it might be easiest for you to do that and then pin it. Working with it on a cutting table like this can be a little bit difficult and it is more likely that you will end up with the fabrics not matching up. But I find that this works pretty well, especially with a project as forgiving as this. Make sure you don't get too close to the bottom edge or to any of the corners because we are going to be cutting and sewing there and we don't wanna to have to cut and sew over our safety pins. I should probably drink this and then move it so I don't knock it over. If you don't have safety pins, regular pins can work too. I just like that safety pins can't fall out. Now that I've got all of my layers pinned together, I am going to cut squares out of each one of the four corners and it's going to be a three inch by three inch square. You can use a quilting ruler, a measuring tape. I'm actually gonna use the mark on my new cutting mat. 
Now I have a three by three square cut out of the corner and I'm gonna repeat that for the other three corners. Let's celebrate getting our corners cut, woo! Now you're also gonna want some pins. Sorry, I forgot to mention that earlier. Pro tip, don't drop all your pins, but if you do, keep a magnet around so that you can pick them up easily. Start at one of the edges and you're gonna fold both pieces in one and a half inches. Then it will meet where you have made your cut and you're gonna pin it. You're gonna keep folding it over one and a half inches. And just to make sure that I am actually doing one and a half inches, I'm going to use my quilting ruler and use it along. Just to make sure. You are also gonna to wanna to make sure that your two edges are lined up because you will see this. Once you've got the one side done, let's repeat for the other three sides. Now that I folded over and pinned all four sides, we're gonna take this to our machine and using about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, we're gonna sew along all four edges. As always, let's make sure our drink and our pins are by our sewing machine. And I'm just gonna start in one of the corners and let's make sure to do a forward and back stitch. If you need to do any kind of adjusting your fabric as you go, especially if you got a lot of fabric like I do, make sure you put your needle down, otherwise your fabric will go and your thread will go with it. So let's just sew all the way down. I'm trying to go for an eighth of an inch seam allowance, but my fabric, because it's fleece, is kind of rolling and folding up and it wants to roll onto itself. So I'm gonna go just a slightly larger one for mine and I'm also using my finger to kind of flatten it and help it go underneath my presser foot. So now I'm at the end, so I'm gonna back stitch, forward stitch, and cut my thread. Now I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna start a fresh row of sewing on my next side. And we're going to keep doing this all the way around. All right, so I've just finished sewing around my edges. So what I'm going to do now is lay out my fleece blanket with my champagne. I'll take a drink first. Though. So now let's lay our fleece blanket with one of the sewn edges facing towards us. Now you can use a quilting ruler or a measuring tape or some other kind of ruler but I'm going to use the lines on my cutting mat. I'm gonna line this up and you're gonna take your scissors and you're going to make a cut every inch. Now you're only gonna be cutting in about an inch because you don't wanna cut your seam. That would not be good. So you're going to just keep cutting, being careful not to cut the seam. So now you can see I have these little loops that are all one inch wide. You're gonna keep repeating this until you have cut the entire blanket. I'm gonna make sure I keep my drink nearby because this part does take a little bit. All right, now we have fully cut our fringe. It is time to braid the edge. Doing the actual braided part and making the braided look is pretty easy. Take the left loop and push it through the right loop so that the right loop is now laying down flat like this and the one that was the left loop can now be in your right hand. And take the next loop, so left loop through the right loop. The right loop lays down flat and then the left loop goes on your finger now. So then left loop, then now left loop, through the right loop. You're just gonna keep repeating this process all the way down the side. Give you a closer look. I've got two loops and they have both layers of fleece in them. The one in my left hand is gonna go through the middle of the one in my right hand. That one goes and lays flat and now this loop goes on my right hand. I pick up the next loop, I do the same thing. I push it through and kind of make it 
lay down. And now this is the new one in my right hand. And I keep pushing through the left loop through the right loop. And the braid ends up looking like this. So it looks like on the back. This is what it looks like on the top. You can still see where I sewed this edge, but it's definitely not as noticeable. I've just finished my first side. So now I need to move over to the next side. So I'm at a corner. Now to go around the corner, you just do exactly what you've been doing. Take the left one and pass it through the right one. And then we're gonna just continue around the other side. So this is what your corner will end up looking like. It's a little bit rounded. If you find that it's kind of sitting like this, you can just roll it back and stretch it out to flatten it a little bit. I find that if the braiding is getting a little bit difficult, that it could be because you see here, my slit is not cut all the way down and that makes it a little, little bit more difficult. So if you're finding that you're having trouble, go ahead and take your fabric scissors and just try to cut a little bit closer to that seam line if you can. One way to make this go a little bit easier and faster is to use a crochet hook or even an unfolded paper clip and pass it through the two on the right and then through the two on the left. And your crochet hook is gonna hook around those two on the left and pull them through the ones on the right. And then I just use my hand to push it down and now my hook is already through the ones on the right, so then I just keep going like this. Once you get to the end, you're gonna need a hand needle and matching thread. I threaded my needle and pulled it through to match the two ends so it makes a double, and then I'm gonna knot it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my last one on the right, and this is my first one I started with on the left, and I'm just gonna tuck this under. And just kind of hide it. I'm just going to hold it with my finger and then I'm going to come up from the back so that the knot is disguised. Then I'm going to wrap around the back and go up from the back. Then I'm going to do this a couple more times. And if the thread is matching, you shouldn't be able to see this. Then I'm going to pass my needle through a tiny bit of the fabric and the thread. And then just before I close that loop, I'm gonna pass my needle through the loop to create a knot and pull it tight. And I'm gonna do that just one more time. And snip my thread. Now it's done. Now it's time for me to go through and take out all the safety pins holding both of my layers together. Almost missed one. Now your edges might be a little bit puckered. I like to go and stretch them out just a little bit. Kind of loosen them up. And now your fleece blanket with a braided edge is done. And just look at that. Doesn't that look nice? I quite like this braided edge and like puckered look. Um, if you don't really like the puckered look, then the no-sew version might be one for you. Speaking of the no-sew version, wait, where's my champagne? Okay, I don't think it's okay. Speaking of the no-sew version, let's learn how to do it. For the no-sew fleece blanket with a braided edge, you're going to need two pieces of fleece cut to the same size. Check out the description for how much fabric you're gonna need depending on what size of blanket you want. You're also going to need a measuring implement of some kind. This is just a little six and a half inch square quilting ruler, a rotary cutter and fabric scissors, and then I'm also going to be using safety pins to keep my two layers together to prevent them from moving while I'm doing the braid. Okay, let's do it. So you can see this here is my selvage edge. It's kind of weird looking. You just wanna slice that off. I like to use a rotary cutter for this because it makes the edge look a lot cleaner. Now that I've trimmed this piece up, I'm gonna do the other piece. All right, now the selvage edges are trimmed off. Let's make sure that our two pieces of fabric are the same size. 
I'm going to start by laying one of my fabrics right side down. Now on black it's a lot harder to tell, but on a colored or a fleece print that has text, it is easier to tell which side is wrong and right, obviously, because the words are backwards, but also there should be, it should be more faded on the wrong side and the sharper, brighter color should be on the right side. So we want the right side down on this one and the right side up on the second fabric. I'm going to match up the corner and the edges, making sure that there are no folds, especially in the underneath fabric. I'm just going to kind of work that out with my fingers. Oh, and the baby woke up. Well, while the baby is finishing waking up, I'm going to start pinning these together. I like to use safety pins. This prevents the fabric from moving so that I can match it up and then not be afraid that it's going to be all messed up. I'm going to pin, I don't know, every couple of feet or so. Don't get too close to the edge. We're going to need about two inches in order to do the cutting and the braiding. I'm just working on my cutting table, but if you have a space on your floor or something that's a little bit larger of an area, that may be easier for you to do this on. I'm just going to go ahead and square up the fabric here. Okay, now that our layers are pinned together, we're going to go to the corners. And you can use a ruler, you can use one of these quilting rulers, you can use a measuring tape. I'm actually just going to use the lines on my cutting mat. And I'm going to use my rotary cutter and we're going to cut out a 2 inch by 2 inch square just out of the corner here. Just like that. And then repeat for the other three corners. Now here comes the most time consuming part of the project. We've got to cut our little slits so that we can start braiding them together. Oh, and let's not neglect our drink. Oh, gosh, don't you just love the bubbles? One method of doing this is to line up your fabric against like a straight line like this on my cutting mat, and then use your ruler or quilting square and go one inch. We're cutting strips that are each one inch long. So we're gonna cut two inch long, one inch wide strips, just like, just like that. Another method of doing this, which might make it a little bit easier, is to take painter's tape or masking tape. I just happen to have a lot of painter's tape around my house and make a big long strip. Also, this is a miracle because my daughter just fell back asleep. I didn't even have to go in there and get her. Hallelujah. What we're gonna do is lay the painter's tape from one corner and then straight across to the other corner so that it connects into a nice straight line so that there are there's two inches along this whole thing. So now instead of having to measure each time, you can put your ruler like this just along the painter's tape and slide it down. You could even use a Sharpie to mark the one inch lines along the whole thing. Or if you have a cutting mat, you can just go along the cutting mat at each one inch mark and cut all the way up to the painter's tape. And now we have all this fringe. And now we just have to repeat this process for the other three sides. Once you have the fringe cut, you're going to take each piece, each double layer, and fold it in half so that the top meets where your cuts stop. Then you're going to make just a tiny slit in the middle here. So it goes through both layers. Fold in half, tiny slit. Fold in half, tiny slit. And you're gonna make a slit in every single one of your fringe pieces. Now we're gonna start at one corner and you are going to take the strips, two strips on the left, you're going to place them through the hole of both strips on the right. Push that one down. Now this one is the one that's on the right. So take the next one, you're going to push it through the hole, making sure you get both layers in there. Okay, pull it through, and then you're just going to keep going. So that it has this braided edge. What I like to do to make sure that the top and the bottom are the same is that I take this left one and I make sure that the fringe from the previous one is pushed underneath it before I push it through. So I make sure that if I keep doing that, that 
the top looks like this, and then the bottom is the part that has the fringe. So push it underneath as you push this one through, this underneath, this one through. Now I've made it to the corner, so I'm just gonna push the last one of this row through. Now to go around the corner, you don't act like anything's different. You just push the first one of the next row through your last one of your first row, and then you just keep going around the corner. And your corner will be rounded a little bit and look like this. If your blanket starts to get a little bit puckered like this, you can just gently stretch it out and that will help. And now I'm at the very last one. <laughs> Since I'm at the end, I'm gonna finish my drink. And now to tie it off, we're gonna take this last one and separate it. And then this first one that we started with here, I'm gonna pass one through one side, bring this one around, and then I'm going to tie them in a knot. I'm gonna double knot it. Now, if you wanna hide these ends, I'm gonna tuck this one back up inside this hole here. And then I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna push it back through this hole. And then I'll go through a little bit too. And then, ta-da! Can't even tell. All right, now let's just take out all of the safety pins that we use to pin the layers together. Here is your no-sew braided edge fleece blanket. This edge looks super braided if you look at it from the top. And if you look at it from the back, you can see that there's a little bit of fringe because we did the no-sew version which is kind of cool looking if you did contrasting colors on both sides. That would be like a little fun, like, ooh, colorful thing. So this one has the fringe and this one does not. So if you don't like the look of the fringe, I would go with the sew version. However, this one is faster and easier and obviously doesn't require a sewing machine. While this one is a little less forgiving if your fringe is uneven or your blanket parts are uneven, this one's a lot more forgiving. This one puckers up around the edges and makes this kind of cute, fun cinched look. While this one does that a little bit, but not so much and it's a lot easier to fix. So there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed this fleece blanket tutorial today. Make them for all your friends or just for every single room of your house, which is sort of what I'm doing. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you would like and subscribe and then stick around so that you can drink along and sew along with me on my next video. Thanks for watching.